Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and uh, and welcome to another episode of the uh, of the BD Footy Wrap Up Finals Edition. Um, so I am going, so I'm going to review round uh, the first week of the AFL Finals, which was last weekend. Um, incidentally, I managed to watch all four you know finals. Um, Sorry, I didn't, uh, apologies for not for not getting this out um, as I'm recording this on Tuesday on, on Tuesday night. Sorry for not doing it, not getting it out on Monday. Um, I just was a bit busy with work and that sort of stuff. So, um, so I am um, getting this out, uh, getting this out to uh, getting this out to da today. Um, maybe uh, I'm I'm. I'll try and get this out tomorrow. Tomorrow, um, try and get this out tomorrow, um, and then maybe uh, do a preview for week for the second week of the finals. Um, maybe record it maybe on a Thursday night, and then and then uh, and then maybe get it out before the semi final the semi final on Friday night. So, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's get get into it. So, um, so so yeah. So, um, so we'll start off with what happened on Thursday night. So, um, of course, the minor premiers Collingwood ended up versing, um, ended up versing Melbourne. Um, of course, Collingwood got the jump. Um, scored for, scored four goals to t uh, four goals to one. Uh, in, in the in the first quarter, um, and then in the second quarter, goal uh, goals were at a premium. In the second quarter, one goal each from either side, um, but uh, but because of uh, Collingwood's advantage in the first quarter, they ended up they ended up um, um, with uh, ended up with a twenty. No, I think uh, no, I think it was a, a seventeen. I believe, yeah. Um, trying trying to work this out, trying to work this out on the fly here. Um, a seventeen point lead uh, at half time. Um, yeah, yeah, and then this, and then this is the quarter where probably Melbourne in, in the third quarter, probably Melbourne shot themselves in the foot, kicking what kicking was it two goals five compared to. Compared to um, Collingwood's Collingwood's four goals one, that's a pretty much a telling statistic in a way. Um, that's where pretty much Melbourne lost the game, but at the same time Collingwood won it. And then, then in the last quarter, I mean it was just all Melbourne. I mean they had all. The, I think they had like twenty odd inside fifties um, in the, in that last quarter alone, and they had like the whole game they had sixty inside fifties to thirty eight. And yet they lost, and, and with and, and also, I believe had I'm gonna try and do this on the fly here. Uh, they had they had three more scoring shots, yet they lost by seven points. Yeah, that is yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good for 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 any Melbourne fan to be honest. It's kind of not good to be to be honest. Um, so, it's, so yeah, but despite, it, yes, it's, so despite, you know, um, despite, uh, three goals, two to only the two behinds in the last quarter, Collingwood held on to win, to win by seven points, nine, at nine, six, sixty to seven, eleven, fifty three. Um, running through, uh, running through, uh, the goal scorers. So for Collingwood, the goal scorers were Bobby Hill with, uh, with three, Dan McStay with two, and then my check, my check to Goey, Crisp, and Cameron all both all kicked one. Um, for Melbourne, uh, Bailey Fritch was the only multiple goal scorer, and also, and also, to have sold in the wounds had probably one of the contenders for the worst miss of twenty twenty three by far. I love, I loved BT's commentary on on his kick that went that swooned swooned up the side of his boot. And went out of bounds on the full. I love these commentary. It was freaking hilarious. 
He's like, oh, oh, oh it, it hit, it hit the, uh, the Adidas or Nike logo on his boots, which was freaking hilarious. Um, but yeah, he was the only multiple goal kicker with Sparrow, Smith, Pickett, Neil Bullen and McDonald all uh, kicking the solitary goal. Uh, the, be uh, the best for uh, the best for, uh, for Collingwood um, still uh, it was still side bottom Jack Crisp, um, Isaac Quainor, uh, as I mentioned, Bobby Hill. Darcy Moore and, and, and Jordan Dugowie. While uh, for Melbourne, Christian Petrarca, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll mention it when, we, when I get to the disposals, but he, I think he only, he had like about seven touches, I believe, in, in, the, fir in the first half alone. And then he, I, I remember, I think he had like, so, and he ended up with 29 at the end of the night. So if I can't, if, so if I can, so he had about, I think he had about 22, 23 touches in the second half, which is insane, really, um, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, and then, and then of course, Melbourne's usual suspects in Gorn, Oliver Viney and Cozzy Pickett as well were, were the best for the Ds. Um, the uh, lean disposal getters on the ground, uh, disposal getters for uh, for Collingwood, uh, Cri uh, Jack Crisp with 23, Side Bottom with 22, um, Mitch, uh, Tom Mitchell with 21, uh, Hoskin, uh, Hoskin Elliott at 20, and Jordan Dugowie at 19. Um, for, for, uh, for On the opposite side of things for Melbourne, um, uh, 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 Quayne Norville was the leader there for Melbourne with 31 touches. Uh, Petrarca, as I said, with 29. Uh, uh, Gorn, uh, Gorn with a very lazy twenty-seven touches. Not bad. Uh, not bad for uh, not bad for someone like Gorny. Um, Viney with twenty and B and Bowie with uh, with nineteen. Uh, just the one um, injury to report from out of that game, which which of course was the big talking point from this weekend. From the weekend was the was the concussion of Angus Brayshaw following the hit to Braden Maynard, who. As I recorded the recording this about, I think about half an hour ago, I think um, he was cleared by the tribunal um, because initially he was sent to the tribunal. We all thought, oh, it's going to be three plus games. Every uh, 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 which I might as well do it now. So at first I thought when I saw that I uh, saw it because I didn't see the initial incident because I was eating dinner. Um, I had to eat dinner. Obviously, and then I looked away and saw everybody, and then I saw the first thing I think I saw was Viney and Maynard going at it, um, and I was like, "Why the hell are they going at it?" And then, and then the re and then I saw someone on the, on the um, stretcher, but I didn't know who it was, and it turned out it was Brayshaw. Um, then and they weren't showing for some reason, and they weren't showing any replays of it, and I was like, "Oh, this is it, is it bad? Is it?" And then, and then they show, and then I saw it on. I remember I looked to TikTok because because this is just like the incident uh, when Jeremy Howe broke it, broke his arm back in round one. They were not showing any replays of it for very very obvious reasons. I had to go go search up on TikTok to, um, to pre to pretty much sort of to know what the hell has happened. And so enough, on. I knew straight away what happened, and I, when the first time I saw it, I thought to myself, "He's gonna be in, Maynard's gonna be in massive trouble, massive, massive trouble." Um, but as I look into it, and I've got more opinions, um, yeah, it, it can, it, I, my decision changed to what could Maynard do. To be honest, I think to be honest, he if he like. Uh, like if he didn't, you know, if he didn't turn his body and bump, um, and bump Brayshaw, he would have probably would have speared into the ground anyways, and it, and even though it would have been him being fine, but or it or yeah, but not or you never know, he probably might have speared into the ground, and maybe his head, maybe Brayshaw's head might have collected his shoulder, and it would have gotten worse. So, what more can could Maynard do? To be honest. Um and uh and, and yeah, unfortunately Brayshaw is not gonna um unfortunately Brayshaw's not is get is not gonna play 
this weekend against Carlton because of obviously with the concussion protocols, obviously he's gonna he's gonna miss this one. He might, and there's potentially might it, it, the the concussion's that bad that he might not play the prelim if if Melbourne make it. That that's how bad it is. Uh, and we all know, and we all know uh, Gussie Brayshaw's history with concussion. Um, it's the it's the main reason why he, he wears a helmet every, every week. That's the reason why because it's to protect him from from um, from concussion. So. So yeah, that's the reason why, pretty much. So, so yeah. Um, so so yeah, but I think that. But con to conclusion, to con to conclude this, I believe for me, uh, at first I said, at first I thought, yeah, Maynard will get him. It would even be Strife. Then basically, and he wasn't the only one to be in Strife out of that one because Jacob Van Ruin's gonna miss. The semi-final with against Carlton due to suspension also went, and that one was a little bit more, a little bit more obvious to be honest. I knew that he was going to get suspended for that anyways, but yeah, um, so yeah, um, but as I said, uh, I think at first I thought Maynard maybe be in trouble, or he could be in big strife. Then as I looked into it more throughout the throughout the weekend, it, I just came to realization basically. What more can Maynard do? And I believe, uh, and uh, I think deep down, I believe the tribunal has made the right decision in clearing him for the preliminary final in a couple of weeks. So yeah, um, so yeah, um, and and then also no report injuries. And by the way, no injuries to report there for Collingwood, obviously. Uh, the subs uh, for Collingwood: Jack Gibbon replaced uh, Darcy Cameron. Uh, in, in, in at some point in the last quarter, um, there has been room trade rumors to suggest that maybe Ginnivan may be looking elsewhere. I know I've heard um, the Western Bulldogs are looking into him, and I've heard recently that Richmond are looking into him. Um, from what I've heard, um, but maybe that reception when he got on the ground in the last quarter. Hopefully it's enough for Gin for Guinea to maybe maybe lean more towards staying at Collingwood. Um, to to be honest, um, and maybe try and work his way into the side. Obviously, obviously, uh, a side with Elliot Hill and 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 Ginnivan is not gonna work. Is is probably not gonna work. And he's not going to fit, so obviously one of those three is going to have to going to have to miss out. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, and then obviously Bailey Laurie, um, obviously of course uh, replaced um, the concussed Angus Brayshaw very early in the first quarter, um, and of course the crowd was played in front of, in front of ninety in front of ninety two and a uh, uh, Ninety-two thousand six hundred thirty-six at the at the MCG. It was a bumper crowd there um, at the MC, at the MCG. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah. So obviously Collingwood, of course, uh, through to the preliminary final, uh, and then obviously Melbourne play this week against Carlton. So so yeah. Speaking of Carlton, I think I've just spoiled it a bit. Um, the first elimination final they played against Sydney, um, they pretty much started like a house on fire. To be honest, they keep. The, I think they keep the first two goals of the game. Um, Sydney, just like Melbourne the previous night, were very inaccurate. Um, that's uh, yeah. It was, it, but it was just all Carlton. It was all Carlton in the second, in the first half. Um, at first half really, they really, they really did. It was really all them, and uh, and they uh, and led by as much, uh, uh, led by, uh, led by as much as twenty nine points at the half. At the half. Um, they, then Sydney fought back with with five goals to three in the in the third turn to to reduce the margin a little bit. They, then Sydney. Kind of stormed, stormed home. Well, sort of stormed home, uh, kicking two goals to one in the last quarter, uh, and and throughout the last couple of minutes, I thought was, was extra time on, and uh, 
and I thought to myself, oh, how, how good would this be if it goes to extra time? Unfortunately, it didn't happen because because they kicked, because they kicked the goal, because Sydney kicked the goal to put them back within, within a kick, back within a kick with about 20 seconds left, and afterwards it was just basically stoppage after stoppage after stoppage, which was what Carlton wanted, Carlton wanted, and they snuck over the line by it, by it, by a goal, uh, winning by six, uh, by yeah, as I said by a goal, 11 8 74 to 9 14 68. Um, goal scorers for Carlton are Cottrell, Cottrell and Martin with two, uh, with two goals each. Uh, uh, Cottrell, I think this was his, this was definitely I think his best game for the club. Um, he was just in everything all night, um, and, and and maybe sign of things to come maybe for him in terms of in this final series again against Melbourne, um, uh, against Melbourne, and then Owe and then Owies, Docky, Cunningham, Cunningham, Cripps, Chera, and Acres as well. Probably Acres was probably best was probably one of the best one of. The best on ground for me, for me uh, 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 as well. Acres, I think for me, he was just everywhere as well. Um, for Sydney, um, McDonald, Goulden, and Parker all, all kicked two each, with Hayward, Amarty, and McLean all kicking one goal apiece. Uh, the best for Carlton, not surprisingly, the, for the, the, the front two was Sam Walsh and um, and, Bla and Blake Acres. Um, Chera at Chera as well. He was a, a bit of a handful. The front four, to be honest, was not surprising. To be honest, uh, I think they were the best four game, the best four players, not only for Carlton but also in the game in general. Really, um, well, five if you can, if you count Golden, we'll get to him and get to get to him in a bit. Um, Saad, who, who was also great as well. Hewitt and and, and Nick Newman. Um, uh, who eventually went on to take that match-winning intercept mark, intercept mark with about a second left to go to basically seal it for him. Um, Sydney's best, um, of course, Errol Goulden. Not surprisingly, he's been doing that all year. Um, McLean, McCartan, uh, 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 Mills, Parker, uh, Blakey, and uh, and Jake Lloyd <laughs> was the, it were all the best for Sydney. Uh, the lean disposal getters on the ground for uh, for uh, for Carlton uh, uh, was Walsh with twenty nine. Uh, Walsh with twenty nine. Um, Acre, Acres with uh, with twenty six. Hewitt uh, Hewitt with twenty five. Um, Chera with twenty four, and then Saad and Newman with twenty three touches each. A certain Patrick Cripps not in there, surprisingly. He only had like 19, 18 touches. I think he was more focused. He wasn't. He, I think he wasn't focused on accumulating touches. But he was basically handing that down to basically like Walsh and Walsh and Chera and that. I think he was more. You know, um, more more. More the efficient one who would grab a like eight, seventeen, eighteen touches, but would go at like, um, like ninety percent disposal efficiency, maybe or something. Uh, I, I'm interested to see his um, his uh, his disposal efficiency because he only had like, as I said, only had like nine, eighteen, nineteen touches. So and he normally would have like, I don't know, like 30, 29, 30. The same, the same as Walsh gets, but uh, but yeah, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty strange really that that uh, Cripps wasn't in there. Um, the disposal getters for Sydney, um, uh, Jake Lloyd with twenty uh, with twenty seven, uh, Gordon and Blakey bo uh, both with twenty three touches each, and Warner uh, uh, and Chad Warner and uh, and Campbell with twenty two touches each. Uh, several injuries to come out of come out of this game. Uh, Nick Newman and Isaac uh, and Isaac Heaney both had uh, had in, had nose uh, in, injuries. You know, it maybe uh, caused blood and uh, blood raw and that sort of stuff. So we'll, we'll figure that out. But the but the big one out of this one was the potential concussion of Harry Mackay. Now we said this about Brayshaw. Um, in the Melbourne Carlton, in the Melbourne uh, Collingwood game, 
Uh, this one's going to be a ma going to be a massive out, but but I don't think but I don't think it would I don't think it would hinder him to be honest because for me I believe I think Charlie Kerno I believe even though he didn't score a goal in this game surprisingly uh, I think for me he has benefit I think he's benefited more from being the show in the forward line to be honest with with, with Mackay out than him in the side to be honest uh, ever since um Mackay did his what was it? Did he did his knee or calf? I believe it was at the latter half of the season, uh, before he came back against the Gold Coast Suns. So, so yeah. So maybe I think for me the the loss of Harry McCoy might not be as too bad of a of a loss for them as as probably everyone else thinks. I, as I would say that probably uh, probably most likely. Um, as I say, that probably Carl would would probably lose the game against Melbourne. So, if, yeah, so if you guys, so if you cut a blue baggers, I, I'll give you the right to blame me if you guys lose and and Mackay hasn't and Mackay, um, and Kuno doesn't doesn't do well, then uh, yeah, you can blame me for it. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, um, for the subs for Carlton. Um, Jesse Motlop, Jesse Motlop obviously replaced Harry Mackay at three quarter time. Uh, I can cast Harry Mackay to be honest. And and Sydney's sub, uh, Robbie Fox, uh, he replaced Joel A. Marcy in the at some point in the last quarter with the game. Uh, we played in front of 92,026 people at the MCG, uh, and it was. A fact also was it was the first time it was the first time in VFL AFL history I believe that that on back to back nights there was ninety thousand plus crowds in in, in finals for two consecutive nights, which is massive. I mean, I mean, I mean the support for it throughout uh, throughout this year has been enormous this year, um, and hopefully hopefully because of this hopefully it's um. Hopefully, crowds get bigger and bigger. Hopefully, as uh, 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 well, it gets bigger and, be and better as, uh, and of course, throughout the twenty twenty four season. So, uh, so yeah, and and possibly with the Cal with with the Melbourne Carlton game, maybe there could be maybe maybe could hit ninety thousand again. Possibly, possibly could it could hit ninety thousand again. Um. So so yeah, um. So so yeah. So then on to the two Saturday games that that was on, which was St Kilda and GWS. So and well, we all know how how this one went. So GWS obviously, of, of, surprisingly enough, St Kilda kicked the first goal of the game. But other than that, it was all GWS uh, kicking five goals to. Five goals to two in that first quarter, and then kicked another five goals in the second quarter, um, in a in a high in a, in a high scoring quarter, um, where St Kilda kicked four goal where sorry GWS sorry kicked kicked five goals two compared to St Kilda's four goal four goals three, um, it, it, it so it was a lot more high scoring than it was, than it was the pre than it was on Thursday and and Friday night to be honest, uh, but. Uh, but yeah, and then um, but but then uh, and then and then at the start, what I felt like at the start of the third quarter, it felt like that St Kilda was slowly starting to edge themselves back into the game. But then in the middle part of the third quarter, that's when GWS dominated, and that's where pretty much the game was won because I believe if. If St Kilda had dominated throughout the entirety of that third quarter, maybe it would have been a sneaky chance to uh, to beat GWS, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough really. Um, however, the Wanganee Miller goal on the siren on the three quarter time siren did make things a bit interesting, to be honest. Uh, but then, um, but that's but that's where it all ended, unfortunately, for um, for St Kilda in twenty twenty three. Um, they would end up losing by four goals, um, 11, 11, 11, to, uh, um, to, to GWS's winning score of 15, 11, 101. Um, 
So the, the, the goal scorers for St Kilda were Max King, who was the top the top goal scorer there for them with three. A Sharma with, with two, all of those, I would presume, in the first quarter. Um, with Higgins, Marshall, Owens, and Wanganeen Miller, they're all scoring one. Um, for GW West, Jake Riccardi uh, was the leader there with, for them with three. Uh, with Bedford, Brown, Brown Hogan, and, and Josh Kelly all kicking two goals apiece. With Callahan, Green, Daniels, and and Lloyd, um, Daniel Lloyd, uh, we're kicking one goal apiece. Um, for St Kilda, uh, the, the St Kilda's best at uh, best, and uh, not surprisingly, was Jack Steele. Um, Cooper Sharman, he had he had a great he had a I think he had a great game, and, and I think he's he handled handled the finals pressure. I think I think brilliantly, especially in the, at the start of the game when he kicked those two goals. Um, to, uh, uh, Marshall, uh, Rowan Marshall, uh, said the Rowan Marshall there. That, that the other Marshall will be coming yeah, coming up in a bit. Uh, and Wang and e. Miller were the best for uh, for St Kilda. For GWS, uh, Tom Green, uh, then, then Kelly Whitfield, Ash Briggs, um, Bedford, and and and, and Iden were the were the best for the Giants. Uh, the leading disposal getters on the ground for St Kilda, um, Jack Jack still not surprisingly led, led for that with, with thirty eight. Uh, Rowan Marshall uh, uh, pro, uh, probably uh, said said to Gorney, I saw I saw your twenty seven touches on on Thursday night, so now I raise you this and got thirty one touches. How good how good how good was he? To be honest, um, Hill. Uh, um, Hill with twenty with twenty nine, Sinclair with twenty five, and Seb Ross with twenty four touches. For GWS, um, Tom Green with thirty five, Whit uh, Whitfield and, and and Lockie Ash with thirty one touches each. Josh Kelly with twenty seven, and Himmelberg and uh, Himmelberg Green and um, and that that's that that is Toby Green, um. Uh, and Daniel and Daniels with 19 touches each. Um, the only injury to report out of this game was um, was Mason Wood. It suffered a bit of a uh, bit of thumb to the eye from um, from Toby, an accidental thumb in the eye from Toby Green. Um, I love the fact that Jason Bennett, the, the commentator that, on uh, for the game. Uh, it mentioned about about wrestler Ric Flair, obviously because he does the thumb in the eye, the, the dirt, called the dirtiest player in the game, obviously. Um, did it, yeah, so pretty much Toby Green channeled his in a in a Ric Flair and just accidentally poked him straight straight in the eye. So and he felt a bit discomfort um, when he got to the bench as well. Did did make the Mason Wood. Speaking of eye. Um, the late, there was only one late change that was for GWS with Stephen Canelio out with an eye injury that 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 he was ruled out for the morning of the game. Um, he was replaced by Xavier O'Halloran. Um, I I would I would to believe that Cornelio might be in for the semi final against uh, against Port Adelaide. Shit I, again, I've just spoiled for what the result is. Um, so yeah, um, and then the subs obviously uh, for St Kilda, Liam Stocker. Um, replaced Anthony Camamidi uh, at half time, and then Nick Haynes came on in place of Isaac coming in the last quarter with the game played in front of a measly crowd. At, unlike the last two uh, last two games of sixty eight thousand four hundred sixty five at uh, again at the G. Um, then on to Saturday night, the final game of uh, of that, which is against Brisbane and and Port Adelaide. Uh, watched all this game as well, like like all the other three. Um, Brisbane, not surprisingly, got the jump. It was a very in. It, it looked to me that Port Adelaide were a bit it, 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 it showed a barrel of nerves at the start, and, and it clearly showed uh, with uh, with Marshall kicking. Was all I think it was two two. Uh, Told Marsh kick two two. And and kicked uh, well two one and kicked two of them out on the full, um which was uh, which is rare from him, um but yeah 
uh, and then and then afterwards it was pretty pretty much it was all Brisbane in a way. Um, uh, Port Adelaide did sort of rally. It rallied a bit a bit in the midway towards the third term where they or actually no towards the second term I should say when at one stage they when Rosie kicked kicked. I think his for, uh, kicked his for uh, Rosie kicked his first. Um, he, um, he uh, that 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 actually put them in front, and then afterwards it was all Brisbane from there. Um, all thanks to the eight goal third term of that third term that they had, and obviously the Toronto gamer himself in in little Charlie Cameron. I was on fire in that in that quarter. Obviously, uh, obviously the country road song, country road, <laughs> yeah, country road. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love, I, I, whoever chose those songs, I know Joe Danaher's what it was. Let it go in, in Frozen. Um, I don't know. Who, I don't know what the others were. Um, I know, I, but those are the two I know. Charlie Cameron's is Country Road, and Joe Danaher's is um, Let It Go in Frozen. Um, so yeah, which is kind of funny in a way. Um, but uh, but yeah, and then of course, um, and then of course Brisbane rounded up with, with three goals to two in the last quarter to 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 win the to smash the power by forty eight points. To, to barnstorm their way into the preliminary final. Um, yeah, I had a few doubts over their finals record and, or, or their status. It, 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 could they overtake Collingwood as, the, as probably the premiership favourites? Probably. I, I don't want to say it too early, though, because we've all said it in the past and it hasn't, it hasn't eventuated for the Lions. Hopefully, it, is, it does this year, hopefully. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, um, so, uh, so yeah, so as I said, Brisbane won by 48 points, 19,923 to 11,9, to Port Adelaide, 11,975. Um, the goal kickers for Brisbane, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Danaher, um, with, with his career finals high of five, uh, Rayner with three. Uh, so too Jasper Fletcher also kicked free in his first final fi fi in his first final. Um, very good going from him. Um, Charlie Cameron, the to tournament game up, kicked a couple, all of them as I said in that third term. Country Road. <laughs> yeah. um, Zorko uh, and then Dane, and then Zorko, McCluggage, um, McCarthy, Lyons, Hipwood, and and, ba and Zach Bailey all kicking one. Uh, for Port Adelaide, uh, Ollie Lord uh, was the was the lone hand for them. Um, lone hand for them with four. Uh, Todd Marshall with two. As, as I said earlier, one of them, two of the two, the two other shots on goal ended up out on the full, um, which was disappointing for him. Uh, with Power Pepper, Burnt Jones, uh, Rosie, and Rioli. All kicking one goal, kicking one goal a piece. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, so the best for Brisbane, not surprisingly, uh, as follows: Dan it was Joe Danaher, Hugh McCluggage, Ray Rayner, Dunkley, Fletcher, and Oscar McInerney, the big O, uh, did really well. Um, and then the best for Port Adelaide, not surprisingly, were their were their usual suspects in Butter in Rosie, Butters, Houston, Ilyali, Lord, and Lysette. Um The lean disposal getters on the ground around for Brisbane were was Hugh McCluggy, surprisingly enough, with twenty six. There was potential that he was going to come off. I think at some stage in the early part of the second quarter, I think with with an injury, I think he. Suffered a blow to the ribs, but he when he but he came back on, and uh, and had a very good very big impact on the game. Um, Dunkley with twenty with twenty one, Darcy Wilmot with twenty, uh, Lockie Neal, um, not much that not much touch to the ball, probably didn't need to in the end with nineteen, and Kadeen Coleman with seventeen. Um, in terms of Port Adelaide, uh, Butters with twenty nine touches. 
Rosie with with twenty eight, Houston with twenty with twenty seven, Willem Drew with twenty, and Pal Pepper with nineteen. Uh, a couple of injuries to report out of this game. All of them for Port Adelaide, of course. The luckless Trent McKenzie, uh, who suffered, I think, a hamstring injury before finals. Nan suffered an ankle injury um, in in the early stages of the third, in the third term. Uh, and, then, and then and then Dylan Williams suffered a ham, suffered a hamstring injury um, also in that third quarter. Just about that I'll mention that in a bit. Um, for Brisbane, um, the, the subs for, for Brisbane: Jared Lyons replaced Devin Robertson in the in the final term, uh, final term, and straight away after he and. After he came on, he ended up kicking a goal. So, yeah, not bad. Go, not bad going there for Jared Lyons. Uh, and then Port Adelaide um, with Travis Spoke uh, replaced Darcy Bennett Jones in the third term. Now, this caused a lot of concern because he because they activated the sub, and then, and then about thirty seconds later, uh, Mackenzie and Williams then got injured. So. So, uh, so that uh, that that caused a lot of ooh, that, that caused a bit of um, bit of concern there for um, for them. So, um, so yeah. So, so um, so yeah, that was a bit of a, a brain fade really on the half for um, for Port Adelaide. Uh, for Port Adelaide, uh, the game was played in front of a packed crowd at the Gabba of thirty six thousand and twenty people. Uh, it, it, it packed into the willing into the old willing gather ground. Um, so to wrap this up, obviously um, Sydney and St Kilda eliminated uh, n now. Um, uh, of course, you, you know I'll do a more in depth uh, uh, review on their seasons, but eventually I do get to it. Uh, and yeah, so basically, eight teams. It, it, it was it was eighteen teams. Then it was reduced to eight. Now it's down to six. And by this time next week, we'll know who's going to be in the grand final qualifiers. So which is it, so yeah. Um, so yeah. One last thing, hey, because uh, uh, I had me I read from my laptop all this time. I want to put this lap down here. So I wanted to uh, on this on. The BD footy wrap up. It's called Footy for a reason, and I'm wanting to to also go watch NRL most of this time. But but I did not want to talk about NRL in this way, unfortunately. It equated to what happened on Friday night. Now, um, of course, as you guys probably don't know, I'm a I am a big Melbourne Storm fan, and, and more accurately, I am a big fan of one Ryan Pappenhausen. Now. The story was I've uh, I, I've been a fan of Melbourne Storm since I was about seven years of age, um, and I uh, and and one of the fan one of the players I was a massive fan of was Billy Slater, um, because the way he played, way he played fullback. Then when Pappenhausen came on the scene, he, he, he sort of reminded me a bit of Billy Slater in a way. That's why I got I fully got around him. Got around him in a way. Um, that's why I was so happy in 2020 when he, when he eventually won the Clive Churchill medal as best on ground in the 2020 grand final against the Panthers. As we all know, he's the last 24, 24, 24, 36 months has been savaged by injury. Savaged so badly by injury. Um, of course, last year he busted his kneecap last year and was out for almost for pretty much 12 months 12 to 18 months and a few weeks ago he came came back and i didn't realize that he came back until i, I looked up on on instagram on the day of when they were playing the titan when they were playing the titans at home and saw a pap announcing coming on the ground i thought hang on whoa i, I need to put this on um so yeah and then and then next and then last week Against against the Broncos in the last round, he scored a try in his first game back, and that uh, to um, to obviously um, obviously obviously uh, to obviously led them to, to victory, obviously, and and then of course 
they played the Broncos again on Friday night, this time for a potential spot in the prelim. Uh, about midway through the second half, midway, I, I didn't watch the game, obviously. Uh, and then after the Carlton Sydney game finished up, I switched on to the post game show of the of the Storm Broncos qualifying final. And they were talking a lot about, and there was and there was something to do with Ryan Pappenhaus and being it, it's a it report, news report on Ryan Pappenhaus of what oh no is he injured is he injured, and as a, as it turned out he did got injured. And then later, I got report got reports of what happened. So what happened was was he, I think I think he, I think got the ball. I believe it was he passed it. I haven't watched all the footage because obviously they're not showing it because for obvious reasons it's pretty pretty disturbing to be honest. His injury and but and basically all I can see was. Uh, him on the ground and and that and and that and then I remember reading an Instagram post um, that explained more about the inj about the potential injury it was, um, which was basically for you got well for you guys that, that that don't want to see the description, please please click off this video now please. Um, but if you want to, but if you, but if you're curious, if you're curious, keep watching this video. So what happened, so what it was, was there was fears of an open slash compound fracture in his ankle. Um, which, which if you, if, if you're an expert, you know what that is. So I'm not going to say it. it for obvious reasons, obviously. Um, and I was flat because I have because uh, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to finally get back out there on the park. He does, as it turned out, bang! He busts his he busts his ankle, and that's probably him out for another twelve months for another nine to twelve months. So yeah, and I did while I was at work. I did um. Came across a TikTok uh, on the official SCN Rugby League page, and they were listing off about uh, Pappenhaus and saying that he has six screws and a plate inserted in his ankle. Um, uh, he is going to uh, uh, the club will support him through his rehab and uh, rehab, uh, well, physical rehab and of course mentally because obviously off the back of. Of shattering his kneecap uh, last year, and then obviously he's come up. And now this this has happened to him again. He this is gonna it's gonna affect him mentally. So obviously he obviously he will he will the club will help help him mentally, and then obviously physically with his ankle, and that which is, which is fantastic as well, uh, fantastic as well. And I. I will admit I do follow him on Instagram, and the uh, oh, the the amount he he's he's got a massive following on social media. Of course, it's Ryan Pappenhausen, obviously, and the he, he posts he's posted so many Insta stories on Instagram. Oh, by the way, f go follow him. By the way, if if you're a fan of the Melbourne Storm. And you're and you're also a fan of Ryan Pappenhaus, and you haven't followed him on Insta. What the hell have you been doing? Go for, uh, go follow him. He's uh, 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 go follow him there. And uh, and the Insta stories of him with basically fans just uh, sending out support, which is fantastic in a way. It was fan it's fantastic to uh, to see and uh, and yeah. So it was to uh, yeah to see that all his fans are supporting him and and getting behind him uh, through this. Horrific injury, to be honest, and uh, and it will make him a whole lot better, to be honest. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, um, as I said, I just felt instantly flat for him in a way because, as I said, he's gotten so he's tried so hard to get back on the park after shattering his kneecap, and then suddenly he's busted his ankle, and now he's gonna be out for another twelve months. So yeah, um, so yeah. So not a good way to, to 
good way to uh, to end the video, but but you know what? But I but I had to get my pen out there, that, that pen out there for him in a way. So um, so yeah. So if you're a fan of if you're a fan of Pappy, please get behind him. Um, please get behind him, as as a lot of people already have. Yeah, to be honest, so 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 yeah. I've, as I said, I've really taken him to heart. Taken him to heart, really. Um, to be honest, and uh, and hopefully, hopefully, I, hopefully, hopefully he wishes a spe Hopefully, um, goes well in his recovery, and hopefully we'll see him back out there in a storm jersey very soon. So, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so like this video, um, um, comment, uh, will share, share to anybody who's a Collingwood fan, um, who's a Collingwood fan or, or a Brisbane fan, um, and, and comment down, uh, comment down below, uh, comment down below, who do you think, will, who do you think will win, um, obviously, obviously, um, out of Melbourne versus Carlton and Port Adelaide versus uh, GWS, who have you got? Who have you got to win those matches? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Uh, and one last thing, somewhere down there, somewhere, uh, click on the big red button, which is labeled subscribe. Uh, but until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. And wherever you may be, may the sun or the moon shine on, uh, shine on you. Hopefully.